and every once in a while we could get our hands on Percocets and Vicodins. Last week, before a rapt audience of Waltham High School students and parents, a former Boston Celtic told a sobering story of drug addiction. When I popped up, the police officer said, Christopher, man, don't say a word. You were just dead 30 seconds ago. They need to work on you. He pushed me back down on the stretcher and he cuffed me. The son of a politician, Fall River native Chris Heron was a highly touted high school basketball prospect. He chose to play point guard for BC in 1994. Like many teens, he only drank and smoked at first and promised himself one night he'd try cocaine only once. It would take 14 years to walk away from. He repeatedly failed drug tests and was kicked out of BC. Fresno State gave him a second chance, but his drug use continued. After his senior year, he was drafted into the NBA. Then a high school friend sold him a little yellow OxyContin pill. $20 I spent that day was going to turn to $25,000 a month drug habit. His sickness consumed him even after he became one of only a handful of New Englanders ever to play for the Boston Celtics. So I jumped on the phone and I called the kid with the yellow pill and I said in an hour and 10 minutes I'm going to hear my dream come true. I'm announced as the starting point guard for the Boston Celtics but without you I can't do it. He kept using while playing in Europe where he graduated to the hardest drug of all. I'm, I'm sick. I'm really sick. I need heroin. Heron had battled injuries during his time as a player, but drugs ultimately cost him his earnings and career. After a bender back in Fresno, he hit rock bottom and tried to kill himself on a highway. As soon as I saw those headlights coming, I threw my body in front of it. I wanted that car to hit me in my chest, drag me down the highway and put me out of my misery. It wasn't his only brush with death. During one overdose, he died for 30 seconds after crashing his car. And his problems weren't just his own anymore. He had also pushed his wife Heather and his kids to the brink. Little Chris and Sammy started crying immediately, asking how come I don't want to be their dad anymore. Finally, after his wife threw him out, a rehab counselor gave him an ultimatum that hit home. You're going to call your wife, and you're going to promise her you'll disappear. Promise her you'll never contact her again. And tell your wife to tell your three kids that when their daddy left them in the hospital this morning, their daddy died in a car accident. You're going to play dead for these kids, and you're going to let them live because you're a no-good scumbag loser junkie who's washed up and doesn't deserve a family. I thank God every day for that man's words. Heron has been drug-free since August 2008. This year, he published a memoir entitled Basketball Junkie and was the subject of an Emmy-nominated ESPN documentary called Unguarded. He told his Waltham audience that he spoke to 150,000 students last year and to pro athletes across the country. And people say, aren't you tired of beating yourself up? Aren't you tired of reliving this? And I'll tell you why, because before I speak, before I speak, I stood at that door and I said, please God, let me make a difference in one kid's life today. Through his speaking appearances and his foundation, Heron helps families affected by drugs. He also inspires bullying victims and others in need of self-esteem. Support one another. For Waltham Newswatch, this is Chris Weingler.